Hello again guys and welcome to another tutorial. In this case we will be learning how to make a really nice harem or bellum simulation. This is very fun to do, it's very fast, it's not that complex and we are also going to be learning how to use Solaris and how to use Nuke. So stay tuned and watch the full tutorial. Guys, do you want to join a really nice server? We have tons of different channels. We have effects, modeling, look, the compositing. We will have resources for every type of discipline. So hop in and have fun. I also have a Patreon page where you can support me. I have every single file, I have polls, I have even some tools, guidance. So if you are interested, you may have a look. Thank you. Okay, so today's video is aimed at creating this character that has hair, bellum hair. And in a way, it's easy, right? In a way, it's easy to control the length, the behavior, and the setup overall, as you can see, is not that big. So everything begins in Mixamo. What you get to do is to download a character with an animation. After downloading a character with animation, I'm going to leave a link on how to do it down below. You need to use an FBX character import and you select your FBX file with your clip, which is mixamo.com, of course. Then you, on the left side, you will have the typos and you will scatter with these two guys turned on and a series of points, a scatter. This will be your scatter. You will see in a moment why we do this. Then we have the out typos and on the right side, you will see we have the animation. All of these three things create the actual animation like in a normal FBX. And this is the out animation initial. This is not what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be transforming the character. So the first thing we got to do is to get these typos then get our rig and a little rig pose. This will be so that at the beginning it's on a pose and we will also do a scatter and this will be the out T pose scatter. You have the out T pose scatter here and the out T pose scatter A because this is the shape we want to do and this is the initial shape. After this, we will just create a BDB out of this on point one, a little bit of smooth a little bit of, well, this is the skin BDB rest position because it's on the rest position. And a conversion to polygons. This is good enough with the rest position set here because, of course, this is not moving. Finally, to prepare this geometry, we need to grab our rest position here with our points here. This is because I'm going to use a point of form and I want to be as precise as possible. And then this out typo scatter will be following this animation because remember that these scatters do have these attributes. If we follow this animation, you will see it begins as, as usual, but you will also see that this is, well, th th this will be hard to scatter hair on. They will start clipping between each other. So what you got to do is to do a blend shape. This is your first frame, but you want this to be the first frame. So what are we going to do is to just interpolate here from one to zero, from A pose to the actual animation. And this will allow us to have a, a really nice starting pose. This is the out skin animation and the out skin BDB. You will see it also matches with our skin rest position and skin BDB. And this is how you create the initial shape before doing the vellum. Secondly, we need to grab our skin rest. The normals, this is very important to create the, the hair. You want to have normals on points and then you want to blur them. This is what the blur makes. It will basically smooth every hair generation, which is precisely what I want. I will also edit the length or create a length attribute, in fact, and just paint on top of it. Why do I paint? Because I don't want to have so much hair at the bottom. If we do a guide process, you will see what this is doing. It's basically controlling the length of 
the hair and if I want to do more I can add more here I could also reduce it way more this is what I want I'm going to group expression these guys here I'm going to do spin and I'm going to select the first point of primitive this will give me the initial points of each primitive I'm going to grab the rest position and I'm going to grab the animation the A post to the animation and this will be our guided deformation this is what we need to do before doing the vellum. This is also going to be functioning as a, a collision. I'm going to just pick a little bit inwards. It's just a tiny bit, so it doesn't collide with the with the pins. There are many many ways of doing it. This is the easiest. And with the vellum constraints on here, I'm just going to use a pin to animation for pin pin time permanent and soft on the orientation, so it's basically uh, more uh, soft. On everything i didn't change anything this is all as usual and you will see if we control this that the animation or the simulation is quite fast the simulation does the only thing that has is like a collision on the ground only one sub step there's nothing awesome about this this is just a regular uh balloon simulation this is what you would be having right so this is already looking very nice, easy to iterate on. So let's move to the second part of the balloon, which is the actual um, post-process. This is what you will be doing most of the time. You will grab the simulation and you will grab the skin rest position. You will grab a mask noise. If we see the noise, this is how it looks. I'm going to be using this mask just so I can send it over to the to the with a guide screen guide skin attribute lookup i'm going to go to build so i can show you what it's actually doing so what it's actually doing is basically here as you can see if we say mask it's actually promoting this point uh, attributes which are on on the actual mesh to where these would be on the hairs to primitive so the whole primitive is a single core i could be moving this as i please and this will be making a mask this is important because we're going to be using this for the coloring later on okay so then we are going to promote everything from primitive to points and we're going to resample and create a curve view we're not going to allow anything in here maximum uh, segment length we want this to be as intended as original uh, this is how the cure view looks on each of the hairs these are really nice attribute to color this is optional uh, i didn't add the color here this is a way to add colors i think it's going to work if i allow it yes but this is not what i want right now then i'm going to grab again the skin rest and the animation and then a new hair generation on top of it this is the rest, these are the hair guides, and this is the animation. You will see it looks kind of interesting. This is the width of the hair. This is the amount of hairs I'm using, I'm using 300,000 hairs, nothing else. The setup is extremely easy. And I'm going to add the mask again on the rest position. Uh, this is going to be the clamp size. This is how it looks. And the clamp size basically will allow us to have well different sizes of clamps on the character it's going to add the breakups basically everywhere where is red is going to be multiplied the the clamp size by one and everywhere which is blue is going to be multiplying the clamp size by zero so there will be smaller clamps here and bigger clamps here uh, this is the animation we need it for the hair clamp this is how it looks remember i'm just visualizing the cure view one th good thing to keep in mind is that uh, i don't take the guide hair and i'm sending all these attributes forward to the points of the of each guide and here what i'm doing is using these these attributes i mean these parameters basically what i want is going from big small so the blend is usually smaller the earlier we are uh, since this is a very easy setup i just use a singular hair gen but i usually use more than one I usually use three or four going from low rest to high rest this is the crossover so the clamps are not so um 
So, perfect. And the coraline is set to 0.2. The coraline is like some wheel on, on the hairs. If I go to 0.4, you will notice this. It's a mad, it's madness. Uh, there are not so many points. Well, there are, but not as I would like to. And I don't, I'm not doing anything with the attributes here. I am also doing again a clamp size here. This clamp size looks like this. This is harsher. Then I'm also doing, uh, okay, this is interesting. What I did is to edit the parameter interface of this group expression and I added a float here. This float is then uh, set to select me a random of 30% chance. And what I did is to look at this is to copy parameter and replace this with a relative expression. You will see that then I blast a lot of this out. I can, I can control this with this parameter. And all these hairs will become um, a new clamp. Uh, in this case, this is affecting a little bit somewhere, but the main factor is actually this one. This will control the amount of mini clamps I have. The more on the right, the more clamps I will be having. This is very nice to have. You could also connect a hair generation here, but I, I like I prefer this expression. This is the same setup, exactly the same. You will see this is how it looks. On this case, this is the amount of hairs I have, and these are the mini, mini, mini hair clamps. You will see I'm mean, going from nothing to small, I mean, from to big clamps, to medium clamps, and to very small clamps. It's like adding a little bit of definition. Then I'm just saving this to disk, and I'm doing the coloring here. This is the colors I chose. What I'm also doing is to add a final resample. This is very important to having the subdivision curves, as this will allow me to have softer uh, curves. See? It looks very nice. And this, uh, what I, I also decided to add the color of after and the resample after because the file size is actually very big. Each frame is 120 megabytes, roughly. Otherwise, it would be like 300 megabytes, and that's not actually necessary. Uh, well, the point bob here, it's just uh, the mask, which I did at the very beginning with some curve views, with a uh, curve ramp. This is a float ramp, which is this one for the contrast. And then a multiply with a color ramp set to CD. There's nothing else. Then I chose a couple of of uh, colors here and there. For example, if I enable the the point, I mean the cache, and then I just change this mask offset, the colors will move around, as you can see, which is very nice. Exactly what I was intending. Finally, all the resamples, so we have more detail. And this is everything there's nothing else the simulation was the fastest thing ever this is a little bit of art direction and this is a, a little bit more technical the final part is to actually create the camera uh, what i'm going to do is to load this in first this is skin animation and this is the old trick i used on my previous video in fact it's the same animation um i'm going to just grab the skin blast the head do a box out of the head and save this, which is going to go to chops. Then I'm going to grab, then what I'm going to be doing is, let me show you this. What I'm going to do is to do a channel grabbing my chop. So this is going to the chop net. In the chop net, I'm grabbing the geometry, which is, well, what I did before here. And also grabbing the P and this is animated. If we go, let me just save a version just in case. And if we go into the animation editor, so sorry, in motion effects view, you will see right now, this is the position of the box. This is how it looks. This is the position of the box. This is how it looks filtered. You will see it's like smoothing everything out a little bit, which is very convenient. And finally, here I'm adding a small delay. The delay 
basically offsets everything to the left a little bit. So it's like following the head of the animation. It's following the head, but uh, not at the same pace. It's, yeah, it's like a hand camera, basically. This channel also is grabbing the chop net and I'm grabbing the P and I'm then shifting this a little bit like this is my static transform which is like basically a frame which I liked a lot and this is my out animation transformation. This is what's going to be following but we need our initial shape, right? This is what's following. Uh, if we go outside, why did I do the, the first shape and the last one? This and this. Uh, because if I grab an all, which I can obviously animate, uh, just in case, uh, I can extract uh, the static, which is the source, which is the initial shape and the destination. I'm not going to extract the rotation, I just want the translation. And if I plug it in into the camera, it will actually be using the animation as a follow-up. If you go and see this, you will see it's following the animation with a little bit of delay, but it's also smooth which is very nice, very organic. This null is intended, so I don't have this clipping, as you can see. This corrects everything. These lights, you can ignore them. And I don't really know what this is. And this is from the previous video, which I'm not using in this tutorial. So let's continue go into stage. This is one part which I liked the most. And what I'm doing here, it's a, a bunch of things. Firstly, let's let this load where I am. Yes, here. Okay, firstly, what I'm doing is to grab in the camera. This is just the camera from the from the subs. I'm also grabbing the hair. You can see I can move in the timeline and this will just be moving. This is with OpenGL. Uh, it's taking a while because it's calculating the color and also the, the resample. That's the only reason. You can avoid that. You could totally avoid it if you uh, save it into disk. I didn't want to. I'm going to open again new because we are going to be using that in just a minute. Then I'm also creating a floor, which is just a floor with a, a 100 meters with a UV wrap. And then on the material library, I'm going to do two things. The floor and the hair shader on the hair main. The hair main is this one and this is the floor. This is how it's linked. Let's dive in. Let's go into the karma. Okay, so let's begin with the hair. The hair, the only thing is going on is I ticked everything here. I didn't do anything. It just looked cool, in my opinion. And the transmission is very big. Let's see this with some... Let's unhide it, the floor. Let's unhide this. This is going to be later on. And let's look at this light linking. So, the hair shader... On the, on the transmission, it makes everything a little bit translucent. If we turn this off, it's very opaque. The translucency is what's making this like feel more organic. The secondary re reflections is like, well, as it's just a secondary, secondary reflections. We could add this a lot, is it will make it a little bit more metallic. I just turn it on and separate the tip color. Um, I don't know why I did this. I just set everything on. And on primary, this is the intensity of the colors, and let's set this to 11. It will be very, very saturated. And the reflection size is like, as, imagine it as a, the specular roughness. If you set it too low, it's going to be way shinier, like as a metallic hair strands. But I'm going to use this, which is default. Nothing else here, and nothing else anywhere. This is the hair shader. When it, when it has to do with the, with the actual Floor, what it is, is to grab a couple of uh, shaders from from bridge, and I did the following. This is very simple. I'm grabbing the UV from the ground. I'm multiplying this by 33 because I want to make the UVs bigger so the image is smaller. And I just grab a simple um, texture. Which in this case, it's just a regular roughness texture. You will see how it looks. Oh, it's this one. Don't worry. And I'm controlling this with a simple ramp. This is the color. I said the blacks to blacks and the white to a color very close to black. It's 
actually creates a difference. If you set this to red, you will see the the ground turning reddish, which is also very nice. I, I like it a lot, but it's not what I'm going for. Then I'm using the same roughness. I don't know why I separate these two guys together. Uh, yes, I don't know why I did this. In fact, it should be working. This is the same. And the roughness is it's just going into a ramp, but more contrast. It's going to the specular roughness to the displacement too and into the displacement. If I set this to 0.1, you will see it will start being pikey at the bottom, which is not what I want. I want this to be subtle, mainly because I didn't want to use the normal map. I just didn't quite like it. These are the materials. Okay, so let's go in here and let's see what happens with this setup. This is very interesting. So as you can see, it, there are some rays, in fact. What's going on? So firstly, I'm setting up a light library, setting up, oh my God, setting up a light library with a gobo. This has a texture and this texture is just a bunch of lines, right? So instead of doing one line per light, I'm going to use a lot of lines per light. And secondly, I'm setting up a ray light. You will see just in a moment. Okay, it's not pointing anywhere. But this is a, a ray with this is the size. It's a very, very, very small square somewhere. It's here pointing downwards or forwards, in fact. Uh, and this has the gobo chosen from this light library. The exposure is this one and the color is that one. And here, the only thing I'm doing is to setting the exposure to 30. Nothing else. The copy the points is the most important part of this setup, which is just, as you can see, scatter of these lights. If I change the light here, you will see, poof, it changes the color of the rays. And to go backwards. And this is just a simple, well, there are a couple of things here going on. So it's a box, mainly where it is with a piece of offset. You will see just in a moment. But this is a box on the top of the character with a scatter. There are a couple of points, well, just one point. It's a transform upwards. And what I'm setting is the orientation, the normal. The normal is going to be the normalization of the opposite of the P. So the duration is going to be pointing downwards here. And everything L1 is going to be the same. Basically, I'm setting a direction based on a point and then I'm moving the point so it, uh, so I can actually control the direction of this rays. Nothing else. I also set a CD in case I wanted to actually do something with the color, which I didn't. So you will see, if I go here, I could potentially rotate this and you will see it's moving very nice so these are my lights and I'm also setting a first initial light which is just this pointing downwards like a back a back light and this is the LP tag you will see in a moment what this does this is the exposure width height nothing else and then I'm setting another light in this case it's just a filler on the top I mean at the front this is the front and I could potentially do boom and this is the filler. I just wanted to recover a, a little bit of the, the colors. Light is a three. It's just a side light with a, this is the, what's doing. This is the bottom. If I set this here, it's going to be appearing in the ground. I want just to have this on the right side, which is exactly what I want. These are the properties, just a simple color. This is nothing. It's just a white color. And on Karma, this is the LP tag and nothing else. And the long double light with a simple HDRI. But as you can see, the ground looks strange. So I linked my dome light and I decided to uh, ignore the floor. I just drag this here and the floor, I drag it here. And this is what it's doing. So I can uh, increase this a lot and it will just focus on the character. On the left side, I'm saying, hey, Grab the hairs and just disable the primaries. So you will see the secondaries uh, here at the bottom. And the, with this floor, this is set to buckets. This is set to primary samples 64. And I'm going to use the beauty and split every single LPE tag. And also have the position, depth, and normals and 
crypto uh, oops crypto object and crypto material just in case nothing else uh, and now you will see i have the all the different lights doing a different thing on their own this will be easier to see because this is the opposite instead of doing the hairs i'm choosing the choosing the 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 ground and this is how it looks the beauty very nice but i'm also this uh, changing all these render passes so i can control them in compositing you will see yes they are very some of them um some of them are very subtle some of them are very harsh the H hdri i don't know it's not working it should be working yes it should be working uh why it's not working i really don't know oh yeah it's it was a bug okay then i just selected this is the render file this is the camera and i'm just rendering this with these settings nothing else really but this is the entire file this is all the houdini section i'm going to save it this is what you will be having if you join the patron then if you go to nuke this is what we will aim for this is a very nice setup you will also be having this if you go into the adult patron so i'm grabbing the ground and i'm shuffle every single as you can see every single pass this is the this is the c-ray this is the back this is the front this is the hdri which is nothing this is the side which is also apparently nothing but there is, there it is if we merge all of them this is what we will be having and you will see that i did something here basically i'm fading off these sections by doing a premate of the position and grabbing this is how it looks on the alpha and basically grabbing with control click where i want the mask to be let's go back to where it should be there we go I'm inverting this and the grade is just well uh, fading off this light these merges should be all set to plus and they will be merged into this final section right here uh, with the postage stamp what i'm doing is basically doing like an object merge grabbing the points if i select deselect this i don't have anything if i select this again i i do have the the connection and what i'm doing here is to basically because i don't have uh, because I shouldn't be having an alpha. I, mean, I think I may be having an alpha. Yeah, I don't know why I have an alpha here, but uh, I copied or replaced uh, the alpha. Oh yes, I'm merging the alpha here too. That's that's the issue. So I'm replacing the alpha, so it's just a singular one. As you can see, this is very clamped, and this is just the original alpha here. I could potentially just disable this, and it would be the same. I'm unpromoting this so we can add all the color correction we want here, which I didn't do anything. And I'm merging it with a background uh, color. Then we're, I'm going to do the same with this. I'm going to separate everything. As you can see, this looks very cool. Let's go here. Here we go. This is, for example, one part. This is the other one and the other one and the other one and so on. We merge all of the with a plus. This is how it looks. I'm adding again the original alpha because this is destroyed and this isn't. And I'm promoting this so we can add all the color creations or whatever we want here. All I'm doing here is to blur this effect, do a from, so we create a difference, clamping the negative values. You can see it's from zero to one thousand, and then merging this with an over. This is going to add a little bit of a sharpen. It's very subtle, but it works for me. You can see these highlights get a little bit lifted. And I'm promoting this again. I'm doing a rotor because I did have an issue uh, somewhere. Let me check where. I did have an issue. Yeah, I believe it's here. Let's see. Let's see. Somewhere. I don't remember where. Yes, here. You will see I have a, like an issue with these hairs getting attached to the geometry. So I just did a rotor of these guys being animated here with a stencil. 
this is with a stencil and I merge these two layers together. Uh, moving on, <laughs> what I did is to grab the stencil, I mean to the postage stand of the character and also of the ground. Uh, in this case I didn't do anything uh, particularly interesting. Uh, and I selected rice here and I also selected um, but in this case I selected the result of this guy. So it's basically this one right here, this grade. And then I did a stencil of where the character would be. This is the character and the stencil is actually just, as you can see, deleting where the character would be on top. Uh, I'm also controlling the glows with this part and I'm just connecting them with a control and click and I'm connecting them. So if I control this one, I'm actually controlling these two in case I want to also have a glow here. I decided not to add a small glow here. It, it can potentially look good. If you press the D, you will see it's potentially good, but I decided just to not do it. Uh, these glows are basically a, a small glow and a big glow, which is very, very subtle. You'll see this blurs it a little bit and this adds like a sharpen on top of it. So uh, what's going on here is that uh, I'm just adding again on top of the of the of the character a little bit more glow here and there. Uh, I could tell I did a mistake where I should also have um, added again the roto the, this roto right here. Which is not a problem, nobody is going to notice. Uh, but if I were to do it again, I would just move this here and do a new stencil here. Right? Exactly the same. And if I plug this in here, boom, it gets deleted. This is how I would be fixing it. Right? So let's actually do it right here. And. This should be connected right here, which I'm actually going to be selecting this one. There we go, right here. This is the solution, as you can see, solving in real time. Finally, this is everything that's actually doing. If we go here and we can disable this, it's like making everything appear a little bit more. There we go. I had to do first the shuffle and then the stencil. This is how it ends up looking. Very nice. Then I'm going to use a small color correction with the shadows uh, a little bit to the blue, the mid downs a little, so a little bit to the blue, and the highlights a little bit to the blue. But also the shadows a little bit on the green side. Then I'm going to transform this. Uh, no, I'm actually not going to do. Yes, what I'm going to do here is for the uh, chromatic aberration is transforming one of the channels, in this case the red, uh, with a simple scale of 0.1. This is going to be creating this nice uh, chromatic aberration. I'm also lens distorting this a little bit. You can see, so it looks like uh, like a fisheye. Then what I'm also doing is to grabbing again this potish stamp, which is from here, from this last part, before all these lens and distorting. Uh, I'm grabbing a luminance key, this is on the alpha. This luminance is just grabbing the highlights and promoting this. So I basically have everything clamped and I'm blurring this. I'm blurring this because then I want to do a color correction and we will use in these two guys. And then I'm going to grab this image with a found online, reformat it to the to the desired format and on the grade and grade this to 1.8 and multiplying as you can see uh, the highlights with uh, these two guys together. So this is actually going to be recovering if you go higher this is going to be recovering the actual color of the character. You will see like these dots are reddish because of this and that also these dots are kind of bluish because of of where it's nearby. Uh, then I'm going to use a small grade, radial grade so we can 
hide this a little bit downwards like uh, like a small vignette and i'm adding a little bit of grain on top of it very 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 subtle but it's doing something like a little bit more breakups and finally i'm exporting this uh, with these settings the best settings uh, for a mob or one of the best in fact the finally uh, also i forgot to show you what are the the settings of this uh, project which is a full hd this is the frame range and the color is set to osseous 1.2 nothing else uh, the viewer is of course set to srgb aces and we're done guys Thank you guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have any doubts, feel free to leave a comment in the comment sections, or you can also subscribe and go into my Discord server to ask anything there. We are always there for you. See yeah. ya.